Kerbal Space Program 2, a long-awaited sequel to original Kerbal 1 on a new engine, new tech, better polish and all-round more… better stuff everywhere, ended up on a sour note. At a full price, a game developed for a minimum of 4 years released very buggy, performance drooling, bare minimum and arguably even below the MVP state. And no, I'm not talking about the most valuable player, but minimum viable product. Even though on launch it garnered interest, it quickly was clear that this was another case of early access crap that won't be anywhere near the same functionality as the original counterpart and it will be years before it gets there. As a result, both negative reception and dwindling player base followed. My Failures of series is in fact started because of this game, and as I took a look into this topic, a further saddening realization came. Due to mishandling of Kerbal 2, not only the player base plummeted, but the stank transcended and caused even the original Kerbal game to lose players by a very notable amount, over 50%. Since that day, developers Intercept Games has had 12 months. So the main question remains, have things improved? So then, it's been a year since the launch, and once more installing the game, running it for a little bit, I notice a few changes. A few months back, you see, end of 2023, developers released the first big update, reintroducing science gameplay, but in a slightly different format. It was good time, people started flocking back to the game, reaching good numbers on Steam charts. But a month later, we're back to business as usual. Low player counts and the game looking deader than the film director asked to make another DC movie. So, let's take a look at the three failures I presented back then and see if anything has changed. Right then, well, let's start with the obvious, the bugs. Well then, when Kerbal 2 was squirted out of the 2K's anus like a stillborn, the game was immediately ravaged by cockroaches. And yes, we know it's early access, and unfinished nature is of the beast. We get it, but still, is this main to see a full price product be shit with just hopes and dreams as promises in long run? It kinda reminds me of Star Citizen, and you don't want that. Still, over the 12 months it is worth remarking. Yes, some bugs have been squished, as you expect from a game in really any state. Though, being a simulator you do kinda pay uh, closer attention to details, and in that regard, well, the kindest thing I can say it's still not good. As for performance, well, you know, it's kind of funny. I decided to boot up RenderDoc, a program that allows you to analyze and examine how a game generates a single frame. It kind of looks like this. The reason why it's funny is that at the time I didn't realize this, but developers also use this very same tool. In fact, in a rather old post from March 2023, Kerbal's graphics programmer Mortok goes into a detail about the problems Kerbal 2 faced. And he fully admits exactly the problem with Kerbal 2's poor performance. The bottleneck is the GPU, not the CPU that you'd usually expect for a simulator game. But regardless. Back then he explains, in a rather vague and inconclusive terms, of what causes the biggest problems performance-wise, and he points to terrain taking the longest time to render. PQS stands for Procedural Quad System and it's the algorithm used to generate planet terrains. From this report we can see that the terrain clearly takes the most GPU time. But hold on, is, is he implying that for every frame they are procedurally regenerating the terrain and that's why it's so slow? Rather than generating it once, then storing it in memory and then reading from- No, I must be mistaken about this one. But then again, Kerbal looks like shit and runs like it too. So, no, 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 I, I fucking refuse to believe that they're that fucking stupid to regenerate the mesh on the planet every frame. Th that would just be retarded. So let's assume something else is happening here. But hold on, then again I was testing the latest version of Kerbal 2 on my CPU bottleneck Threadripper build and realized that even in the lowest settings my GPU is still bottlenecked. So the problem of GPU bottlenecking is still a massive one. Yes, the game does play a little bit better, but I emphasize the word little bit. 
But anyways, if you want to nerd out, I do recommend reading that post, I'll leave it down below. It's mildly interesting, but it's very vague. So instead of that, I decided to dig into RenderDoc myself a little bit more to investigate what's going on. And what I found was disturbing. Uh, then we start drawing something... something super small. Literally, you can count the fucking pixels on this. Now, however, the mesh itself is this. Why? First of all, why such a large thing when pixel-wise, right? It's super small. But okay, you know, whatever. One thing doesn't matter, right? So what it ends up being, you generate, and then you realize, oh my gods, that's the fucking Kerbal. But then you progress through the scene, you know, it generates the terrain, extra little things, blah, 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 blah. There's the rocket, and done. The Kerbal is inside. Why? Why do you need to draw the fucking thing? Uh, okay, I get it that for game developers, you're going to be focusing on the squashing the biggest chunks first in optimization. However, the lack of simple occlusion culling, you know, something like a three-click feature that is already present in Unity, you know, the engine that they're using for this game, or hell, even coding your own, should not take longer than, I don't know, a week or two? I mean, yeah, it would bring small improvements, sure, but it's also cheap and quick! And then, there was another thing that deeply disturbed me. Right, so here we go. This is where the helmet is being drawn, and that resides in here, right? That's literally, that's all the pixels it creates, while at the same time the mesh that is being called is this large. Plus the textures and everything. God, this is just... So unoptimized, graphically speaking. Jesus fuck dancing Christ. Okay, I get it. Again, this is a step above occlusion calling, but to render these massive overbloated models at full scale when they take up literally a handful of pixels on a screen is downright inexcusable. Now, I'd like to be understanding. I want to be understanding. I even love the post that Murdoch made. But when you guys ask for a full $50 price on a product that today, though yes, runs a little bit better than on the launch, still runs like ass, and a dipshit monkey like myself can point and say, Hey, why are you rendering such a massive polygon model? Uh, why are you even rendering that model when you can't see it? Then, you got a fucking problem. And this is just a surface shit, and by no means, I'm not a graphics programmer, of course. But, when in the render doc, I can see you guys calculating depth buffer. A simplistic fucking culling algorithm and LOD should be a super fucking simple thing to introduce. <sighs> I guess the word that I'm looking for here is a disappointment. 12 months and we still render shit like this for 2 pixels of the screen. Fucking genius, mate. Nah, 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 you know what? No, 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 you know, this pisses me off. Okay, so I'll patronize Intercept Games and offer a fucking solution that they most likely know about themselves. This fucking video, for example. Go watch it and relearn what the fucking depth buffer is. But you know, who cares? As long as your average Joe Blow gets his 60 FPS, the game is fine, right? Well, what matters is the content and... Oh boy. I was missing quite a lot of it on launch. So how's it today? See, we compare Kerbal 2 to Kerbal 1 so much not because the game shares the name and aims to do the same thing, but because it is supposed to be the same thing. Though the other reasons are also quite valid. Kerbal 2 failed to do the very basic thing, to be at the very least the same and no less. Well, guess what? It was less. Missing features left a rather big hole in the gameplay that was rather hard to hand way away, and performance of course only exacerbated the problem. In all regards, Kerbal 2 was a lesser game that asked for more money. However, 10 months in, science update finally drops in, and it actually was kind of good. People flocked back into the game and it looked like it could maybe finally be playable. Skip a few weeks and the player numbers plummet again, where Kerbal 1 is still being played a lot more. 
but there is a positive. Kerbal 2's average player numbers are now higher than they were before. So, at this point, developers seem to just need to keep on pushing out the big content updates, and the game might be just saved, maybe even overtake its predecessor. Steam reviews also have been in recent times more positive, so the signs are encouraging. There is a definite light at the end of this tunnel. And looking at the roadmap published by developers very early on, this is only just the first step of many to come. So at least we can see that the plan is in place. But the problem with this one? Will they have enough time to deliver it? See, it's hard not to point at the 10 months it took them to deliver science mode. And from the old game, we're still missing career mode and a few other ones. At this rate, including performance optimizations, it will have taken them the same time Kerbal 1 took to be finished. And yet, at that point, only then Kerbal 2 would be matching its predecessor. And that, well, it's just poor showing. And so, just like I asked in the failures of, why did they need to release Kerbal 2 as early as they did? Yes, you can technically say that Take 2, the cunts they are, like any other business out there, decided to burn the goodwill and reputation of this beloved game to just see some kind of return on investment to keep the funding and the game going. But as a result, developers now have to fight a very unpleasant uphill battle. And so after 12 months, I ask, was it really worth it? Would have it not been better to just wait for an extra year to release Kerbal 2 in the current state? Yeah, actually, come to think of it, maybe not. I mean, it's still missing key gameplay features, let alone performance optimization. But one thing I certainly know about, and that is that Kerbal 1 would have not lost over 50% of its concurrent player base if they just had waited a little bit. And that's the biggest disappointment. The stank of Kerbal 2 ruined the goodwill of Kerbal 1. And that is just a shame above all. And that's the thing, you can't even blame the fans for holding a grudge against the developers, and definitely the Take 2 who shoved this thing out. This is literally the textbook example of what happens when you don't care about the IP you are beholden to. Or maybe you just acquired it for a quick buck. Hmm. But I suppose I should end on a positive note. The glimmer of players returning is still there. See, the science update already shows that players are willing to return as long as developers are releasing quality and notable content updates. There is still a very good chance Kerbal 2 can redeem its existence, despite the grumpy Yamix always saying, if we reward this, the companies won't stop doing and pulling this kind of shit. Are we really so quick to justify the early access bullshittery? But for the sake of Kerbal 1, science, education, and so much more that it brings to gaming and, well, all of us everywhere, I gotta say, best of luck to Kerbal 2 and their developers. Do not disappoint me like today again. Yes, I'm looking at you, graphics programmers, god damn it. Jesus Christ, they had 12 months and there's still no LOD or calling, for fuck's sakes, how, just, just bad.